on the real MVP, man. The real Travis Ford. We in this East Side Finest, the Main Street Mafia, man. 98 Fourth Street. Y'all know what the is going on, man. And I'm gonna get y'all the real, man. I'm gonna get y'all the politics, and I'm gonna tell y'all how it is. Man, Travis Ford, Main Street Mafia, man. Y'all see my eye like this. Well, you know, the bro wanted me to uh, explain something about this street shit and this politics to everything, man. And just like jail, school, and all this shit, you gang banging, you're gonna listen to somebody, you feel me? And I'm the type of man to do my own program, man, you feel me? You know, shit, man. You're gonna, you gonna play the game, you gotta answer the consequences. Whether it's a year ago, whether it's nigga last minute, whether it's. Nigga, a couple minutes ago, you gonna pay the consequences, man. So anybody gonna get in the street life, man. DPs come with it. Ain't no getting put off. You get, you think you gonna get put off? It might be the wrong way off. You feel me? You get put on, man. It's gonna be life. So I tell all the kids, man, y'all gonna do this shit and and gang bang and shit like that, man. Do it the right way, man. You gotta follow the rules, man, to this shit, man. This see my eye, man. We out here in the streets. We don't play that shit, man, you feel me? No matter who it is, ain't nobody bigger than a program. The situation came from five years ago. Some shit happened and it came to the table, so, you know, five years ago, still got it, you know, still. BP, whatever, man, it goes down, man. It's life, man, it's a part of gang life, man. It's part of, it happens like that, man. If everybody here, man, everybody here, man. I can walk around proud to say that shit because I've been a part of this shit since I was 12. You feel me? Mainstream office, man. Since I was 12, you feel me? And, and I gotta play my car. I'm 32 now. And I gotta play my car the same way. And shit don't change. I don't fuck who you is. Little nigga, old nigga, OG. We all the same car. We all gotta play it the same way. I used, to be, I used to be a kid, man. And that's my stepfather. So I used to go in the closet and shit, you know. And, and see the little gang books and shit. And I used to be like, damn. Shit, man, what's this shit? All this tagging and shit. Everybody in my family. East Coast, I'm Main Street, basically, you feel me? So it's just like, it was in my blood, man, my family and all that, man. Like, hi, man, we had a big old thumper, man. So, uh, shit, shit got real, man. We, I think we got into it. We don't beef with them niggas none, though, but at the time, we got into it with the soft lows. And then, um, my boy, Baby Dro, you feel me, at the time, you feel me, you know? Shit, they jumped over lot gate, man, and shit. We had to troop over call all the homies, and I realized, like, oh, and I was a teenager, man, when I kind of started this shit. So it's like, damn, this shit real, you feel me? We got to really, like, you feel me, troop up. Usually people ditching the school, shit. We had people actually hopping the gate coming into school, <laughs> you feel me? That's what I heard a lot about in a lot of L.A. stories, that it'd be older motherfuckers that had come fight the kids and shit too though. It's just not even kids, but like middle school, high school, y'all yeah. be into a grown ass man gonna pull man, up. I, when, I, when I started growing up, when I turned like 19, 20, man, you know how many times I went to jail a lot for being up there, <laughs> you feel me? Coming to fuck with the little homies and shit, I used to take my ass to jail, right to 77. <laughs> so right. it's like, with this game, it's no age limit, it don't matter if nigga younger than that? Yep, it don't matter, then you playing the same game, like I mentioned before, like, DPs and all that shit. It don't matter who you are, how old you are, what's your rank, none of that shit, man. It's, it is what it is. Shit, man, just like death, man. A lot of death, a lot. It's a saying that they say your friend's gonna be dead in jail if you game bang, right? You ever heard that saying? That shit is so true because I can tell you this right now. All my friends are either dead in jail that I grew up with. Literally, you feel me? They dead in jail. So, you know, I had a couple of little situations. My best friend, brother, and everything, Tiny Bird on my back. My every day, did everything with this dude, man. Went to jail. When I got to jail, this nigga used to go to jail on purpose. You feel me? Like, man, I'm going to jail with my brother. Fuck it, he in jail, I'm in jail. And losing him to the streets, man. While having somebody, like, gun him down and shit. Like, watching him gun him down and he not alive no more. And really growing up with this man, remembering his laughs and... This and that, man, that shit is painful. Bro. So you seen your best friend die? Yeah. Can you take us back to that day and right. what had happened and then how it was affecting you, what was going through your head all the time? Yeah, man, so I can take it, man. It just, back to that day, I just remember seeing him lying there, man, basically. Seeing him lying there on the floor next to a pole like this, and this pole kept him alive, and the stupid-ass police, you feel me, the fuck police, they um, took his arm off the pole. That was keeping him alive. He was actually like this. You feel me? You know, that little blood was circulating. As soon as they snatched him off the phone, I mean, off the pole, as soon as they passed, snatched him off the pole, arm just like this, he lost his life. As soon as they snatched him, lost his life instantly. So, yeah, man, fuck the police. And, and rest in peace, Tony Bird, James Cox. You feel me? He might get hit. I'd have been in situations too. I'd have been shot at. 
man, 14, 15 times. I ain't got no no bullet braids on me, you feel me? Yeah, man, I was sitting in the car, man, and uh, I'm a type of person that like looking at my mirror, so if I just see this one dude looking at my mirror, I seen him running a t-shirt just came across the car. I told the homie to be like, pull off. Well, he pulled off, man. The dude started busting, nigga, with a full clip. Shot about, it sounded like 14 shots, but when I went back and picked up the bullet shells, you feel me? Because I got a thing with picking up bullet shells. I don't know, but you feel me? And I went that pick, I picked up 22 bullet shells. So it sounded like he had a drum on like 14. It sounded like 14 shots, but he was shooting 22 at me. Intuition, what was going through your head? And how do you be prepared for that situation? Cause not a lot of people just ready for that. Hey man, you can't. You gotta be just be on your toes, man. Some people not ready, man. I just seen niggas with burners get killed. You feel me? So, you know, you just gotta be on your toes. You gotta be ready for life. You feel me? Straight. Up. That's what it is. You, feel me? you gotta be set ready. Cause I can have two guns on me right now and, and, and lack and get shot down. Are we talking? And you be like, damn me, why he had a gun? You feel me? Unless you got the ups first, really. Yeah. Facts. You gotta you gotta stay on your toes. Gotta stay on when I was younger, man, I, I I think I hit a wall, boom, boom. I was hitting, knocking the walls in the garage. I used to find like a lot of bullet shells. So that was the first time as a kid I found bullet shells and shit like that. And then it was just like several times. Then when I like when I know it's shootings on certain areas, it's like, I know it's shootings on certain areas and shit, I just pick up the bullet shells. Be like, you feel me? I look for them. If I can't find them or nothing, seek them. And not too much success, you feel me? But until I became a leader versus a follower. See, when you following, you on somebody else's plans. You feel me? So when I stopped following motherfuckers and stuck my neck out and started doing certain things, you feel me? Then I became a leader, man. I became a rapper, man. I done had like several jobs since then, you feel me? Like, I ain't no little bitty young nigga. I look like this. I'm 32 years old. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So yeah, I done, I done seen it. I done been through it. This gang banging shit, would you say that it's a lot of followers and shit? Cause like you say, a lot of motherfuckers grow up into that shit and they don't know no better, they don't want to try no better, that's all you see. Right. But then they just, at the same time, they stick into the code and what they supposed to be doing. Right. So what's your take on that? This is my main thing right here, man. And I'm gonna just say it like this, not to throw it off the subject or nothing, man. Gang banging right now, when I started gang banging, it was like this, family, familiar. You feel me? Everybody was one, man. Oh, I have clothes. All right, the homie ain't got no sweater, man. I ain't got, I mean, shit, we gonna put him on the sweater. Or if the homie ain't got nothing to eat, oh, we gonna get him something to eat, man. We eating out the same boo, noodle. It wasn't all like that. Like, shit was way different in my days. So the gangbang in today's day is like way different. I say it's about 85% different. You feel me? Than what it was when I was gangbanging. It was more as a family, you know, the, the uh, um, you know, crip, man. You feel me? The family, man. Um, everybody coming together, doing their shits. You feel me? Like, you know, looking out for one each other, man. Not going against each other, trying to beat everybody up and fucking up everybody and robbing everybody and, oh, this pack with this pack and this and that. It was different, man. It was just like, man, we was all family. We was all one. This gang banging shit, would you say that it's a lot of followers and shit? Cause like you say, a lot of motherfuckers grow up into that shit and they don't know nobody, they don't want to try nobody, that's all you see. Right. But then they just, at the same time, they stick into the code and what they supposed to be doing. Right. So what's your take on that? Shit, man. Shit, man, just. <laughs> shit, man, just like, man, I don't know, man, it's shit. Just, man, just, I just, this is my main thing right here, man. And I'm gonna just say it like this, not to throw it off the subject or nothing, man. Gang banging right now, when I started gang banging, it was like this, family, familiar, you feel me? Everybody was one, man. Oh, I have clothes, all right, the homie ain't got no sweater, man, I ain't got, I mean, shit, we gonna put him on the sweater, or if the homie ain't got nothing to eat, Oh, we gonna get him something to eat, man. We eating out the same boo, noodle. It wasn't all like that. Like, shit was way different in my days. So, the gang bang in today's day is like way different. I say it's about 85% different. You feel me? Than what it was when I was gang banging. It was more as a family, you know, the, the uh, um, you know, crip, man. You feel me? The family, man. Um, everybody coming together, doing their shits. You feel me? Like, you know, looking out for you one each other, man. Not, going against each other, trying to beat everybody up and fucking up everybody and robbing everybody and oh, this pack with this pack and this and that. It was different, man. It was just like, man, we was all family. We was all one. So a lot of motherfuckers got those broken homes and all that shit like that. You right. go outside looking for that shit that you missing at home. Right, right, right. It's really, that's what it is. Cause I just seen rich people, man, come down and gang bang. 
I done seen uh, people that have shit, man, jobs, don't want to get put on. I done seen people that have shit, no family, no mail, nothing in jail, getting put on gangs in jail, bro. I done seen it all. So you're right. It's more of the motion of what people are just missing. It's not about no age. It's not about looking cool. It's something in there missing. Because I can say I was there, too. Mm. That's why I started, too. <laughs> me, me being, maybe it's because I'm from the Bay or whatever, but, like, I feel like, I, don't, I feel like I don't really got no place to say whether or not, but I feel like if you, like, an adult already trying to get put on or join a gang, you're done. Right, right, Because right, it's like right, most people, they born right. into that shit, it's kind of... Because I started at 12, bro. I'm 32. I started gang banging at 12 years old. So that's how I be seeing niggas like, damn, nigga, you 25 and you 32 trying to get put on? I'm like, that shit weird. <laughs> that shit weird. The niggas are weird nowadays. It's like, in a sense, why would you want to put that type of shit on you? Right. You already right. live, like, you already made it through the hardest parts when right. you say doing that shit. Right, and facts. Right, that's what I said. If you ain't gang banging or you wasn't grown into it or not even today's day, like I said, that shit different. It's mostly people that's grown into this shit. Now this shit like a gang banging like a music video or a rap group or something. Everybody wanna join and shit, you feel me? Yeah. But back then it was more of your area where you grew up at, where your family knew, man. Protecting this area. Criminal revolution in progress. All that shit, man. Niggas was saving the areas, partying in their hoods, keeping the outside motherfucker that ain't supposed to be there, keeping certain drugs and people out their hoods and shit. You feel me? Criminal revolution in progress. Criminals, revolution in progress. Starting to change. That's where it started at. When, uh, I don't know where it went from there. <laughs> you feel me? Got killed. That's my opinion. You feel me? Raymond Washington got killed. Everybody that knew Raymond Washington, you feel me? Uh, shout out Ray Ray, his daughter, you feel me? That's the homegirl. You feel me? Everybody that know Raymond Washington, uh, they know he never really spoke to nobody. He trained to, like, don't go to nobody's car if y'all don't know him. Y'all don't know him, don't go to that car. It might be an enemy. He trained all the Crips to do this. So when he got shot that night, obviously he knew somebody in that car because he stuck his head in the window and they blew his motherfucking head off. You feel me? Rest in peace, Raymond Washington. That's when the shit, everybody wanted to be a leader. That's when everybody wanted to be a leader. He came back out of jail. He was actually trying to make a prog progression with clearing the beef up with the bloods during this time. You feel me? Mm, you said Raymond Washington. That's... Yeah. OG Raymond Washington. Came East Side Crip. Came with Tookie Williams. Oh. Tookie Williams, that's what I say. A lot of people get it mixed up. Tookie Williams did not start the Crips. Raymond Washington started the Crips. Actually, Tookie Williams came together at Jesse Owens Park and they had a meeting for Tookie Williams to join the Crips. You feel me? You remember that in the movie? So if Tookie Williams was already a Crip, why was they meeting making this shit one? Raymond Washington started this Crip. That's what people don't understand that shit. Tookie Williams was more like, you know, a superstar. So, you know, just like now, the nigga that's a superstar gonna get seen versus the nigga that's a real, you feel me, gutter nigga, you feel me? And plus, he got killed young. Yeah. He mm. got killed. Putting this shit back together, right? Uh, Tiki Y. Williams was still a little alive. Walk up to no car if you don't know who this person is, right? You gotta remember, when Raymond Washington died, he died sticking his head in the window. He knew these niggas. That's what he's saying. That's what he knew these niggas. His, his thing was never walk up to a car that you don't know who this person is. So that lets you know when he walked up to that car all the way down his, uh, his driveway, he knew the niggas. You feel me? He knew the niggas. That's what I'm saying. So. That's, that's the sad part of it. I feel like it wasn't no enemy. It was somebody of uh, his own. Straight up. Jealousy or envy or something like that, probably. Yeah. Come with the package, man. Come with the package of everything. So then what does that tell you about this gangbanging shit and how you go about it? Because if that's the crib leader, I'm most respected, most loved, most yeah. hated at the same time. No. Yeah, man. It just teach me. And not just that, man. Gangbanging period teach me a lot of shit. I learned a lot. You feel me? I learned a lot, man. I lost a lot, man. You feel me? Just gangbanging period. You're going you're gonna to learn a lesson. And just make sure you're going to be here long enough to learn that lesson. You did. You feel me? Because some of everybody don't make it past 21. I'm 